All right, so what we're going to do today is we are in chapter two, and we're on page number page number 82. We're going to do a couple problems out of page number 82 um, and just show you the different topics. I'll put up some definitions and things, but we're essentially just going to go over and start dealing with this uh, motion. That's our first topic here is motion. We'll start with number one up there in the top left under displacement. And when we're dealing with, uh, if, if you watch the video like you're supposed to before class, we had a couple things that we were dealing with. Uh, the first one is distance. And the symbol for distance is a D. And this is essentially how far you go. And then we have displacement, right? This is the other one. And displacement is a delta X. And that's how far and in which direction. So how far and which way you're going. So like if we use our Cartesian coordinate system, this would be negative X. This is positive X as a Y, positive X. This would be negative Y and this would be positive Y. So we have, that's positive Y. We have those four displacements. So displacement is how far you go from your starting point and in which direction. And then finally, we have this term called magnitude. It'll say magnitude of displacement. And that's the absolute value of delta X. That's the magnitude of your displacement. That's just the size. Magnitude means size. So how big it is. So when it asks for the magnitude of the displacement, you're not worried about the direction. You're only worried about this first quadrant stuff, positive X, positive Y. It's just the size, the amount. So when we go up here to um, number one, and we have those four drawings, A, B, C, and D. Number one says find the following path A, and A is the distance traveled, B is the magnitude of the displacement, and C is the displacement from start to finish. So what this looks like, for those of you who don't have a book, or just to follow along, and green was the color, is A looks like this, and it, but it's horizontal, more horizontal than that. It has a starting point over here. It starts at zero, and it goes to seven. No, it, yeah, it goes to seven. So for part A, it says, what's the distance traveled? So for part A, the distance is seven units. So it's going from here to here. In part B, it says, what's the magnitude of the displacement from start to finish? So that's the magnitude of the displacement is the absolute value of delta X, and that's seven as well. And then for part C, it says, what's the displacement from part start to finish? That's delta X. And you can see it's going from zero to seven. So that's seven. So that's an easy one. That's a beginner. First problem in the chapter. Then for, we'll go down to number three. Three says find the following for C. And C is a little bit trickier. C starts here, goes over, curls up, and then comes back to here. So C starts at two. So this point here is two. It goes the whole way over to here. That point is 10. It comes back to this point, which is eight, and then it finishes up over here at 11. And again, we're going to do the same thing. What's the total distance traveled? Well, we go from two to 10, so that's eight, and then we go from 10 to eight, that's two, and then we go from eight to 11, and that's three. So the total distance traveled is 13 units. What's the magnitude of the displacement? Well, displacement is just from start to finish. So that's nine. And then what's the displacement? Well, since it's going from start to finish is to the right, that also is going to be a nine. So that's the difference between distance, magnitude of the displacement and the displacement. So we start here, we come around, and we end up here at five. So the dis distance that we go is from nine to three, that's six plus two, eight units. 
the magnitude of the displacement. We start at nine, we end up with five, that's four. The actual displacement from start to finish, we start here, we end up here. You can see we're going in the negative direction. That's negative four. So we're actually going negative four units here as our displacement. Does anybody have anything they need clarified on this here problem? You see the difference between distance and displacement. The next problem we're gonna look at is number nine. So let me clear this. Number nine. And number nine says, on well, May 26, 1934, a streamlined stainless steel diesel train called the Zephyr set the world's nonstop long distance speed record for trains. It was witnessed by more than a million people along the route. The total distance traveled was 1,633.8 kilometers. What's the average speed in kilometers per hour and meters per second? So for number nine, whenever we're doing a problem, we usually read it, or we always read it two times. And the second time we read it through, we pull out the information. So it says, on May 26, 1934, a streamlined stainless steel diesel train called the Zephyr set the world's nonstop long distance speed record for trains. It was witnessed by more than a million people along the route. The total distance traveled was 1633 kilometers. So that is our distance, 1633.8 kilometers. And it says the time took 13 hours, four minutes and 58 seconds. Let's say 58 seconds. So, and our goal is to find the average speed. That's what it asked us in the last sentence. What's the average speed? And first we're gonna find it in kilometers per hour and then meters per second. So if you remember from trig, distance equals rate times time, when we're looking at average speed here in physics, speed is your distance over time. So when we're finding average speed, the formula is distance over time. How fast equals how far you went over the time you did it. So we have 13 hours, four minutes, 58 seconds. We want to get this answer. The first part wants to be in kilometers per hour. So we got to get the units into kilometers per hour. So we got to change minutes and seconds into hours. So four minutes, there are 60 minutes in one hour. So that will convert that. And then we want to go from seconds to hours. So 58 seconds, there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. So we have 13 plus that. That'll be our total amount of time. So we put this in our calculator, we add it up, and I got 13.083 hours. That's our time. Thirteen point oh eight three hours. So now we have our distance. We have our distance and we have our time. So we can put it into our formula. Speed equals distance over time. That's in kilometers over thirteen point oh eight three hours. So our average speed is 124.88 kilometers per hour. And that's our answer for part A, 124.88 kilometers per hour. Does anybody have anything clarified there? Notice that line I put above the S, that means average. Even when you're doing any statistics or anything, when you're looking at an average, uh, you always put the line on top of it. We're gonna have average velocity, average acceleration, uh, and this differentiates between instantaneous, which we'll talk about in the next section, or next time we meet. So whenever you see that line, you mean average. So distance divided by time, that's our average speed. 124.88 kilometers per hour, and we want to 
convert that into meters per second. That's for part B in number nine. It says find it in meters per second. And this is something we're gonna do a lot of, converting from kilometers per hour into meters per second. So I'll just put that over here and we'll do our factor label again to get it into meters per second. So I extend this out. We know one kilometer has a thousand meters in it. And one hour has 3,600 seconds in it. So we can find out how many 34.69 meters per second. And we found out the average speed, both meters per second and kilometers per hour. Does anybody hang, have anything to need clarified there? All right, that's number nine. We will move on then to the next one. Clear this off. Why don't you guys try this one at your desks where you're seated and we'll take a look at it in a minute. So number 10 is the next one we're gonna do. And for those of you who don't have a book, I'll read it to you and write out the variables. Tidal friction is slowing the rotation of the earth. As a result, the orbit of the moon is increased in a radius at a rate of approximately four centimeters per year. Assume this to be a constant rate. How many years will pass before the radius of the moon's orbit increases by 3.84 times 10 to the six meters? So we're gonna call this an average speed problem. And this time the average speed, the rate is four centimeters per year. And the time is 3.8, oh, the time is what we're looking for. And the distance is 3.84 times 10 to the six meters. Average speed equals distance over time. We're trying to find time, so we're gonna cross multiply here. Remember cross multiplying, right? Speed is actually over one, so the speed goes down, the time goes up, and we are left with time equals distance over average speed. So time equals 3.84 times 10 to the six divided by, uh-oh, you see a problem? We have meters here, centimeters per year up here. We got to change that into meters. So 100 centimeters is one meter. That's 0 0.04 meters. So 0 0.04 meters, our time equals 9.6 times 10 to the seventh. years. Number 14 is kind of tricky. A football quarterback runs 15 meters straight down the playing field in two and a half seconds. He is then hit and pushed three meters straight backwards in 1.75 seconds. He breaks a tackle and runs straight forward another 21 meters in 5.20 seconds. Calculate his average velocity for each of the three intervals and the entire motion. So we're looking for velocity this time. Velocity. Last problem we dealt with speed. These are two different things, but they're the same. Speed is rate, a distance is covered. That's your speed. Velocity is your speed with direction. So look at the difference between these two. Velocity is your speed with direction. Speed is how fast you're covering a distance, essentially. Speed is what we call a scalar, and scalars only have magnitude. Only magnitude, all right, only. It's easy to remember because they both start with S, S, S. Velocity is a vector, easy to remember, VV. And vectors have magnitude and direction. So vectors have direction associated with them where speed only has the size. So if I'm going 30 miles per hour, that's my speed. If I'm going 30 miles per hour west, that's my velocity. They're two different things. Now you can have an instantaneous speed and an instantaneous velocity, which is a speed at an exact moment in time or an average, which is over a period of time. 
but the two speed and velocity are different, yet they're very similar. So let's go to this problem now that we've gone over that background information. 14, let's read it again. A football quarterback runs 15 meters down the playing field in 2.5 seconds. So he goes 15 meters, we'll call that X1 or delta X1, we can call it, 15 meters. And the time is 2.50 seconds. Then at this point, he gets hit and he goes back, delta X2. Now we gotta remember that's negative when we do our math, is 3.0 meters. And T2 is 1.75 seconds. And then from here, he's going forward for delta X3, another 21 meters. And T3 then is 5.20 seconds. So it says, calculate his average velocity for each of the intervals and for the overall. So for each of the intervals, if we wanna calculate his velocity for the first interval, we get our first interval. We'll call it average velocity one. That's gonna be delta X1 over T1, 15 over 2.5, six point oh meters per second. That's our average velocity for one. For two, V2. Delta X2 over T2. So this is negative three over 1.75. It's negative because it's going backwards. So that's negative 1.71 meters per second. And then V3, Delta X3, I'm gonna run out of room over here, T3 is 21 over 5.2, 4.04 meters per second. So you get tired. Kind of ran out of room. So you can see he's got three different velocities. Now to find the average velocity, we cannot just add up 6.0, plus negative 1.71 plus 4.04, get that number, and then divide that by three and get 2.78 as our average velocity. That's not how you find average velocity because each different displacement here is not over a regular interval. You only do that if it's the same time interval, but they're not, so you don't add them up like that. That's not the correct way to do it. The way that you find the average velocity for the whole trip, let me erase everything here, except our given. Is the average velocity equals delta X1 plus delta X2 plus delta X3 over T1 plus T2 plus T3. So the average velocity is 15 minus three plus 21 over 2.5 plus 1.75 plus 5.2. Now we don't subtract this 1.75 because time is still moving forward even though you're being pushed back. So our average velocity is 33, and what do we got? 7.7, 8.7. We get 3.91 meters per second for our velocity. You can see that's different than the 2.78 that we found over here that I scribbled out. Add up all your individual displacements over the total time. That's how you find the average velocity for a whole trip. Like if you were going to the store, you drive to the store, you stop at the red light, you drive some more, you stop again. All those displacements 
as you're doing different things, the time is adding up. So your average velocity is made up of all of those individual events. And that's number 14. This delta, by the way, delta, I've been using that as a Greek letter. It means change in. So delta x is x minus x naught, where this naught, the naught is N-A-U-G-H-T, is represents your starting point. So 19 says, assume that an intercontinental ballistic missile goes from rest to a suborbital speed of 6.5 kilometers per second in 60 seconds. What is the acceleration, the average acceleration in meters per second squared and in multiples of G? So acceleration, for this one we're doing acceleration, that's the change in velocity over time. That's our average acceleration. And the units are meters per second squared, meters per second per second. Acceleration is how fast you get fast. So when we're doing this problem, we will use this information. It says, assume that an intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missile goes from rest to suborbital speed in 6.5 kilometers per second in 60 seconds. So let's put our given data down. We have our initial velocity is zero from rest. Whenever you see the word rest, that means your velocity is zero to a speed of 6.5 kilometers per second. That's pretty fast, five miles a second. That's going pretty good. And the time is 60 seconds. And we wanna find our average acceleration. So we take our given, we put it into our formula So we have meters per second per second. That gives me meters per second squared. So my acceleration is one, oops, 0. Point, or 1.08. This is kilometers per second, sorry. The acceleration is 1.08 times 10 to the minus first kilometers per second squared. And we want the answer in meters per second squared. So we'll factor label this out. One kilometer, it's a thousand meters. So if I multiply that times a thousand, I get 108.33 meters per second squared. That's our answer for the acceleration of our missile. Now the second part of the answer says, what is this in terms of G's? Now a G force, I'll put it up here at the top, a G force We didn't learn about it yet, but in this chapter at the end, we'll, a g-force means your acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. That's the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So one g is not equivalent to 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we take 108.33 divided by 9.8, that gives me 11 g's approximately approximately 11 G's of force, which is pretty intense. Like if you're on a roller coaster, right, it'll talk about the G force. If you were sitting on this missile, riding this missile as it accelerates, you'd experience 11 G's of G force. 